Okay, great. We'll call the meeting to order. Salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Bove? Here. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Farinella? Yeah. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Panisi? Here. Mr. Sesselberg? Here. Mrs. Wolak? Here. Mr. Cassio? Here. Mr. Chapman? Here. Thank you. In accordance with the terms of the Sunshine Law, adequate notice of this meeting was posted in all school buildings, the administration building, the borough clerk's office, police headquarters, public library, four newspapers, and tap into on January 9th of 2020. Please be advised there's no smoking on school grounds inside or out at any time. Please sign all electronic devices and pursuant to district policy 0167, each statement made by a participant shall be limited to three minutes duration and no participant may speak more than once on the same topic. At this time, the board is gonna go into executive session to discuss personnel and attorney client privilege information. We will return in about 30 minutes and action will be taken. Any motion? Motion. So moved. Second. All right, we'll call the meeting back to order. Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Bo? Here. Mrs. Boyle? Here. Mr. Farinella? Here. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Panisi? Here. Mr. Sesselberg? Here. Mrs. Wolak? Here. Mr. Cassio? Here. Mr. Chapman? Here. Uh, folks, I want to remind everybody that uh, this evening, if um, you're not on the Zoom and you need to call in for your question, the telephone number is 908-754-4620, extension 1680. I'll give that number again. It's 908-754-4620, extension 1680. All right, are there any agenda additions or deletions? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have one. Um, we received the contract late this afternoon uh, for the Board of Ed to contract with Central Jersey Urgent Care. They are located in Greenbrook and also Somerville to take care of any rapid COVID testing uh, for our staff. Uh, I sent the contract to Mr. Roselli. He has two changes. I will go back to them with tomorrow. But um, that just handles the date of when um, the contract is going to be expired uh, for June 30th, 2021, as well as removing one word that has uh, no, no material change to it. Um, we would like to add this to the agenda tonight. All right. Any, uh, can I get a motion to add that to the agenda? Motion. Second. Second. The roll call, please. Mr. Both. Yes. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Farinella? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Panisi? Yes. Mr. Sesselberg? Yes. Mrs. Wolak? Yes. Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Thank you. And I'll add that to the finance section. Uh, so we'll add that under finance as. Number 23. All right, very good, thank you. Okay, moving along, any comments from the public on tonight's proposed resolutions only? Anything, Mr. Estrada? Anybody with their virtual hand up? I see no hands raised at this time. Okay, great, moving along. Um, Resol uh, approval of prior board minutes. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Both. Yes. Mrs. Boyle. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Miller. Yes. Mr. Panisi. Mr. Panisi, you're muted. <laughs> Mr. Panisi, you're muted. Mr. Panisi, you're muted. I hear you. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Sesselberg. Yes. Mrs. Wolak. Yes. Mr. Cassio. 
Yes. Mr. Chapman. Yes. Thank Moving you. along to the superintendent's report, Dr. Leshack, please. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Uh, before I begin, Mr. Estrada, are you queued up with our video for in a moment? Yes, I'm ready to roll. All right, perfect. Um, as we all prepare to spend time with our loved ones over the Thanksgiving holiday, we are aware that the likelihood of exposure to COVID-19 will increase. In an effort to ensure we are working to protect the health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff, the South Plainfield School District will close for Thanksgiving break for the half day on November 25th and remain virtual until Monday, December 7th, 2020, at which time we will reopen and return to in-person hybrid instruction. We will, we will remain open for in-person hybrid instruction until Wednesday, December 23rd, half day, and remain virtual until Monday, January 11th, 2021. These dates were not chosen arbitrarily and are taken directly from the recommendations for the Center of Disease Control, which states a study that um, the reports the 97.5% of people with COVID-19 who have symptoms will show them within 11 days. Our teachers will remain at home in order to teach virtually from their homes in an effort to make sure that they are kept safe. We understand this is a fluid situation and we will continue to monitor the positive cases of COVID-19 within the district, as well as the effects the quarantine requirements may have on our staffing within the district. We are prepared to adjust our schedule if need be. At this point, the district has experienced a number of positive cases and we have been able to adjust our schedule or switch to virtual instruction when needed. If something were to change, we would have to adjust our, schedule, our schedules in order to meet the needs of the district. So we will have that information on our website tomorrow. I will be sending out an email to our parents guardians and I will be meeting with our faculty and staff. And I will also hold a parent meeting next week for any parent who has questions um, I normally meet once a month with the parents, so I will do that uh, next week. The other thing that we are going to enjoy this evening is, um, is something that I, I wanted to bring back, but unfortunately we can't do it in person because of the situation that we're in and having our, our, um, our students come and show some of the wonderful things they're doing in our school. So we've now uh, had our students do a couple of um, excerpts and videos from different programs that they're in. So tonight we are going to have a, vi a video presentation from the South Plainfield High School uh, mm -hmm. of our wonderful new greenhouse and our beautiful broadcast studio, which is if you watch Community Connections and now you're watching our, our Tiger TV, that's our new studio and it's fantastic. So the video is from one of our, our series and all of our uh, schools will be doing this. So Mr. Estrada, when you are ready, we can enjoy our video that was prepared by the uh, South Plainfield High School. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Deal, and I have the pleasure of introducing this video. Tonight we have our staff and our students who are going to highlight and share information on three exciting programs that are taking place in our high school. They include AP Studio Art, our new broadcasting facilities, and our new greenhouse. We're very proud of the progress that we've made in this area. They look more like college programs but it's happening right here, right now, in South Plainfield High School. I want to thank Mr. Chris Cassio and his students for putting this video together. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Hi, my name is Kristen Brinkman, and I'm the AP Studio Art teacher here at the high school. This is my second year teaching AP Studio Art. Last year we had six students, and this year we are up to 11. It's really great to see that there is a growing interest. So. The AP Studio Art Exam is not really an exam at all. It is a collection of college level artworks that form a portfolio, which is then scored by the college board. A qualifying portfolio score can earn you college credit as well as advanced placement. There are three different types of portfolios, AP 2D Art and Design, AP Drawing, and AP 3D Design. Each portfolio has specific requirements, but all of them require students to investigate the materials, processes, and ideas that artists and designers use. They also encourage practice, experimentation, and revision within their portfolio, and ask that all students communicate their ideas about their artwork in the form of written evidence. Last year was challenging in ways I could not have imagined. However, my students rose to the occasion and embraced the limitations of being at home. Their hard work paid off as each student passed the exam. This year is challenging in new ways, but I'm confident that it'll still be a success. 
Hello everyone, I'm Emma Ballinger. And I'm Jackson Dalton, and welcome to Tiger TV. You may notice our set is a little different this year. Last spring we started construction on our new set, and over the summer we made the move to our new home in the Applied Arts Hallway. The program has continued to grow from an only AM course to an offering all day with three levels. With expanded classes, the need for space was critical, and thankfully we were given the chance to upgrade. We are still in the process of making ourselves at home and the timing of the move has been a little bit of a challenge, but we have some big plans ahead of us. Our new studio not only has a new set, but also a multi-purpose space that will allow us for removable set pieces for everything from interviews to food demos. Also planned for the studio is an audio recording room for voiceovers and podcasts. And adjacent to that is a conference room for students to write their scripts in a collaborative environment. The goal is to have a fully functioning, multi-dimensional studio that gives the students the, op the opportunity to tap into their creative aspirations and prepare them for future opportunities in college and the media industry. That's all for now. Have a great day, South Wingfield. Hi, my name is Jen and we're here today to work on our hydroponic system in the greenhouse. So today, so far, we've filled up the hydroponic system with water and we've also added 400 milliliters of mineral A and B together to help um, fill the water with nutrients for our plants that are going to be in the hydroponic system. We then tested the water for its pH level and we found that it was 5.5 to 6.5, which is the optimal range of what it should be. So these plants here, uh, they've been sitting in the rock wall, this green thing, for about three weeks now. and. Essentially what the tower is going to do is the minerals that we poured into the water is going to help the plants grow faster and better than before. This is our hydroponics tower. We actually have two of them that will eventually be set up. And basically the way that they work is there is a water and nutrient solution that is stored down here. And there is a pump that circulates that solution up through the tower and then back down again. Here we have ultraviolet lights that are on a timer, so they go from anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a day to help the plants to grow. These were seeds that were actually planted by our life skills class, and these will be ones that we will eventually use in the hydroponic tower. All right, out here we have our outdoor garden, which our environmental science students have been working very, very hard to help set up. As you can see, we have benches that the environmental science club put together. We also have Adirondack chairs, and eventually they will be arranged into an outdoor classroom where any of the classes here in South Plainfield High School can come out and take advantage of the area. We also have some square um, planting beds that are going to be continue to be set up and then will be planted in the spring. So in the future, we have a lot of really big plans for our greenhouse. The environmental science club students will continue to come and work on a weekly basis, helping to keep it and, and perform upkeep. Um, my food ecology and nutrition students, hopefully starting in the winter or the spring, will be coming out here and they will be planting various food crops and doing investigations on the different factors that affect, affect plant growth. So Another class that has been doing a lot of hard work for our greenhouse is our life skills class. Uh, as I said before, they planted a lot of the seeds that we are using in our hydroponics tower, and they are also going to come out here and do a lot of the upkeep on the greenhouse, uh, watering the flowers, weeding when we have the outdoor beds. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. I'd really like to thank our teachers who run these classes. The teachers that are running, uh, Ms. Brinkman, Mr. Cassio, um, I apologize, I didn't uh, even note the, the note for our environmental, um, our environmental club uh, and our, on our uh, programs. They're just amazing teachers who are there for their students all the time. You can see that they're, pa how passionate they are. And uh, now you can see how our students are so involved in the classes, they're out there. Um, even when they don't have to be out there. If anybody has a chance, we have such wonderful things even on the outside of our buildings. As you're walking around, you might have the opportunity to stop by and see our greenhouse. Really is fantastic. We're planning on having the other one set up in the middle school uh, for next year. And uh, I just want to thank our teachers for the hard work that they do and for our students who are absolutely amazing. And we are also going to be having a segment from um, Kathleen Benton's class on the Waxman Project, who just partnered with Vanderbilt University um, for such an amazing program that she's running. So I think it's just important that our, our public know 
what a great job our teachers and our students are doing. So kudos to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Lee Shack. And uh, thank you to everybody in the high school who put that together. Uh, it was fantastic and it's so impressive to see. <clears throat> and um, you know, some of that artwork was just, was just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I particularly uh, found the, uh, the frog sandwich very interesting. So I, I just wrote that down. I want the frog sandwich. I'm going to find <laughs> <Yeah. food. laughs> it. Cool. Well, they, they were all fantastic, but that one just jumped right out at me. So uh, <laughs> great job to everybody. So, all right, moving along to uh, uh, curriculum and student activities. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Both. Yes. Mrs. Boyle. Mrs. Mr. Boyle, you're, you're muted. Okay, yes. Mr. Farinella? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Panisi? Yes. Mr. Sesselberg? Yes. Mrs. Wolak? Yes. Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Uh, moving along to policy, can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Both? Yes. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Farinella? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Panisi? Yes. Mr. Sesselberg? Yes. Mrs. Wolak? Yes. Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Um, moving on to uh, personnel. Motion. <laughs> second. second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Both? Yes. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Farinella? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Panisi? Yes. Mr. Sesselberg? Yes. Mrs. Wolak? Yes. Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Moving on to finance, can I get a motion? Motion. Oh. Any discussion? Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Both? Yes. Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Farinella? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Panisi? Yes. Mr. Sesselberg? Yes, but abstain on number four. Thank you. Mrs. Wolak? Yes. Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Okay, moving along. Can I get any public comments on any items? Any hands in the air there, Mr. Estrada? Nothing that I'm seeing here. I'll and raise mine just for fun. Yep, hands are working. Okay. Oh, there we go. We got uh, Miss Diana Oliveira. Hi, Over please uh, please state your name and your address. And I see uh, Miss Oliveira that, there you go, you were muted. Please state your uh, name and your address, please. Uh, my name is Manuel Oliveira. It's okay. Mrs. Oliveira's husband. Um, okay. I just, I guess I, I wanted to talk about, I'm not sure if it's now, but uh, some transportation issues. And then I also reached out to a couple of agencies as far as getting some type of safe route to school plan going. Okay, uh, now would be the time for anything that you wanted to discuss related to that. Um, I guess uh, we got a letter. So my son just moved over to Grant School from Riley. Uh, he had the bus for the, the five years he was there. My daughter had, had the bus for the last two years. All of a sudden this year, we got a letter saying that um, she didn't qualify because I guess there was a shorter route now. Um, the shorter route that was showing on the Google Maps had her crossing Maple Ave when she walked off our street where there's no crosswalk or crossing guard. And then it had her walking through the park and coming out on the backside of like the tennis courts. Um, so it dropped her down to 0.8 of a mile. I guess I've been speaking with Alex uh, Benente, I think. Mm -hmm. 
So I had him come out and measure. Um, he came back to me that he measured 0.92 to the back door, from my door to the back door of the building. Um, I know I asked him to walk with him. He didn't. He said he didn't feel comfortable because of the whole COVID pandemic. Um, that's understandable. I told him I could have stayed a few feet away from, like ten feet away from him, if needed. But uh, I looked at. I have cameras on my home, so I look um, when he got here. He gave me a rough time, and I looked at it. So when he measured it, he actually didn't walk it. He drove it using his GPS. And it came out to 0.92 of a mile. <coughs> so I asked them if the cr them crossing the streets um, didn't count or did his car accommodate for that. So I actually, I followed my, uh, I had my wife walk with her GPS app. We came out to 1.01 .01 of a mile. I took pictures, I emailed it to him. Um, but my major concern was the whole walking through the park. That's why I ended up contacting uh, RSTS, which put me in contact with KMM. Uh, and I guess they're the ones that do the safe routing plan. Uh, I spoke to somebody named Christopher over there. He told me that if the township is willing to work with them, uh, the board, uh, I guess everything is free. It goes off grants through New Jersey Transportation Department. And uh, they could come out and assess it and basically make like route recommendations and maps to hand out to parents who children have to walk. But I was looking at some of the stats. Um, so uh, just for giggles, I, uh, I Googled sex offenders in a mile radius of Riley School and it shows up three. When I switched it to a two mile radius, we're up to 25 offenders. Um, so then I Googled stats of missing children. There's 800,000 missing children per year that's 2,000 a day, and there's currently 91 of them in New Jersey that they're searching for. So, like, just with all these variables, like, it's, well, we need to do something, you know? <laughs> and then, yeah, like, I'm worried about her walking up Maple. Like, I know we have speeding issues on Maple. That's why there's radars that they put up uh, on my street. She has to walk in the street past four different houses because there's no sidewalks in place. Like there's just a lot of hazards. I don't feel comfortable. And I guess I was told I had to bring it up during the board meeting and see what you guys have to say. Mr. Roselli, do you want to uh, respond? Yeah. So Thank you, Mr. Chapman. I mean, the only thing I, I can say to that is there are uh, laws and board policy that address hazard, what they call hazardous routes to school. Um, and that is something that um, uh, KBB, uh, KMM does, but it's more of, uh, you know, we every year take a look at these routes and say, do, do children cross dangerous roads? Do they cross this? Do they go through, you know, sidewalks, this kind of thing. So I, the only thing I can say is that we are up to date on that and we have met all the requirements. Um, if there's something that we should look at or uh, you know, something has changed that we can certainly do that. But other than uh, looking at those issues as of now, we've met all the requirements that we need to for transportation and, and you know, giving the children who are statutorily uh, entitled to transportation the busing that we give them. Uh, then I know, so like, I, I know you, I know the township went around and they placed all the ADA compliant, uh, I guess, sidewalks at the end of the sidewalk, but no lines were ever painted anywhere. So that's, um, I think that's, that's a, a, a township issue, right? Co correct. We're not, a, we're actually 
prohibited from touching the streets at all. That would be a township issue. Yeah. And so about the side streets or the main road? Uh, so any of the streets basically that she has to cross to get to school, except for the only place there's going to be a crosswalk that's physically painted would be when she crosses over Maple in front of the park where the crossing guard is at. And then I think the next painted crosswalk is gonna be on Cedar Brook. So and that's a county road. And then, yeah, yeah. And it's a county road that she has to walk down. Exactly. We would have, we would, we, you know, that would be addressed with the county. Get those repainted. Yeah. Mr. Benanti, can I just clarify with you? Cause I thought you and I had a conversation earlier today. You did yeah. drive that route, but you told me you also walked that route. I did it uh, three separate times. I, I drove it. Um, I then walked from Mr. Oliveira's front door back to my car, uh, drove to uh, Riley, down Maple, uh, down Cedar Brook. And the last street is, uh, I can't think of the name. It's, it's slipping my mind right now. Oh, it's Walter. Uh, Walter, and then walked to the back door and, uh, and then uh, timed it. And then after I spoke with Mr. Oliveira yesterday, I walked from I walked from Riley School to his house, um, and again I um, had the GPS. I tracked it on my phone. It came to 0.91 miles. But no, I did walk it yesterday. I reached out to him uh, after I did. I believe it was around three three fifteen. But no, I did walk it yesterday. Question, Alex, you did walk through the park, correct? No, I uh, walked down his street, made a right on Maple. Uh, I crossed the street at the sidewalk where the, um, the crosswalk is outside of the park and continued walking down Maple. I then made a left on Cedar Brook and a right on Walter and then went towards the back uh, door um, as that is in the statute, the closest door, door to door. Okay, so he doesn't have to go through the park at all? No. The child, okay. No, no, no park. I understand, uh, but I just want to add that the law actually does allow us to use a public park as part of the shortest route. It's included in the statute. Not that we're using it, but even if you know other districts or, or other situations that would be included as part of the shortest route. Yeah, yeah. it seems like everybody's GPS gives them. Like I know you told when you took you told me that when you drove it, it gave you nine point two. So then when you walked it, it gave you 9.1. Then you said another time it gave you 8.9. And when we walked it, it gave us 1.01. Um, I did notice uh, when you did show up yesterday, um, if you would like to set up a time, we can um, somehow I'll talk to Mr. Estrada. We can set up a time where we can watch the video together. Um, but I did notice you pull up in your truck, walk to the door, and then get back in your truck and drove away. But yeah, because I, I drove there so my wife and my daughter wouldn't have to walk all the way back home. Yes. Videotape them walking up the sidewalk. <laughs> so, um, hey, uh, uh, Joe, what is the, um, the distance before we have to provide transportation? So that uh, it depends in our policy is a mile. It is one mile, yes. The state policy is two miles, but our policy is one mile. And and the, so there's people that, uh, so my street runs into James Place and I know there's like three other children. There's, I think one from Pine Street and then two children that live towards the end of James Place closer to Oakland. The bus still stops there every day. Well, like I'm assuming they still qualify for the bus is what I'm getting at. Like it's still gonna go there. Like, I mean, for a matter for for a matter of five hundred feet or whatever you want to call it, it's it just seems. They sent up a letter. Right. I think that this is um, uh, un unfortunately something that can't get resolved right here in the in a public meeting uh, like this. I, th I think we're all aware of uh, your feelings, and you know we just got to come together on this and make sure that it's a safe route for the child to get to school and that we are complying with our policies. So I, I just think that maybe this needs to be continued 
you know, um, offline with Mr. Uh, Benanti and then Mr. Roselli, if, if, if need be, to figure out uh, a reasonable resolution to this. I'm Mr. Chairman. To... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was going to say, I, I agree. That would be the next step is to have Mr. Benante meet or speak with Mr. Oliveira again uh, to talk about the route. But just from our point of view, I just want to assure everybody that we are in compliance with our policy. Right. So. Okay. I'm fine. I'm, I'm also fine with that. But um, I, I mean, I, I'd still like, and I'm willing to volunteer anytime needed. But if we could work with KM, um, KMM as far as getting, well, because I'm sure there's other parents that are having similar issues um, and concerns about their kids walking. And I, I don't know, like I, I've looked, other townships around us have this plan in action. I think it would benefit everybody. I think it's something that we could take a look into. Yeah. All right. All right, Mr. Oliveri, thank you very much for your input tonight. It was uh, it was very valuable. Okay, uh, I see another virtual hand up there, Mrs. Doyen. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Doyen. Hi, how are you? Um, I just wanted to know the return date after Thanksgiving. Um, I know we were going to go out after Thanksgiving. What's the return date in December? December 7th, Monday, December 7th. Now, can I just ask, since that's only one week after the children are all exposed with their families, is there a reason why we're just doing one week? It's 11, it's 11 days. So if you look at the recommendations, they actually say that if you're going to show symptoms, the symptoms usually show between five and seven days. And for the most part, they, the studies show that, that 97, 97 and a half percent uh, show after 11 days. The extra okay. precaution that we've been doing at 14 days, that really has to do with um, uh, step back from taking your, your when symptoms started to show and when you tested positive. So based on this, really the incubation period would be the period of those 11 days for when they return back. The, st the students can get back into the swing of things before they have to go out again. But Sandy, like I said before, our numbers are, are changing daily. Yeah. So this is fluid. Okay. Uh, so, no, because I just, I have some staff members texting me and I just wanted to know for sure. So then, because um, I, I was writing down dates. And so then after Christmas, it would be back on January 11th. Yes, right. after yes. Christmas, you'd be back on January 11th. Okay. So there, there could be a possibility if the numbers change in December, it could be longer than the 7th. That's what they're asking. Anything could happen. Could okay, and, and, and I just want to clarify for everybody listening in case anybody tuned in late, uh, there will be virtual school going on on those days that we're out. It's not, okay. we're not closed. Now the staff is, is out or in? No, I want you to stay home and the board absolutely supports this. So, I mean, you're, you're going to be with your family. Maybe you want, but maybe somebody else might be. And just to keep everybody from, from mixing. And I mean, you have to see each other in the hallways and, and whatever. So just stay home, teach from home, be safe and and okay. Back Thank you. Help. I just want to make sure because I'm getting some texts right now. Thank you. Yeah, so and much. just be and, and just be clear that that was the 100% board unanimous support on that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other um, public comments on any other items? <laughs> Seeing no hands up, I will move along to board member comments. Any board member comments, Mrs. Boyle. Okay. Um, again, congratulations to our retirees that are on our agenda this evening. Thank you for your services to our district. Um, a healthy Thanksgiving to everyone. And Mr. Deal, thank you for the high school um, presentation for the art, the technology in the recording room, the greenhouse, the planting beds, and to the teachers who um, work so hard with the students to on a daily basis to do these um, items. Also, um, QSAC, um, at our county meeting we spoke the other night, I know that government relations are going to go back to the governor to request that at this time, because of COVID and because of employees that are out, it's very difficult to pull all the um, required paperwork for QSAC. They're going to ask the governor to possibly postpone 
um, CUSAC. Uh, also, um, thank you for the resolution this evening for the coaches um, uh, contract in opposition. Um, the press box, will we be continuing with the proposed nominations and discussions? Um, so far we haven't, we did a public present a discussion and we haven't had any further. Um, you, know, uh, you want me to answer? Sure. Mrs. So uh, yeah, at some point we'll get back to it again. We got more, th more important things I think right now to handle related to COVID and all this stuff uh, than to just rush along with this. I think that it's something that we should definitely address, but I'm going to, I'm not going to put it on the front burner at this time. Okay, yes, we need to definitely address it since this has been ongoing with emails since the summer. Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. You're right, Mrs. Boyle. A couple of people uh, put in a request uh -huh. for it. So we'll, you know, and it, I'm not saying that it's not something that we'll address or look at, but for right now, we're going to put it on the back burner. Okay, also for the um, closing of schools uh, or the incubation period, um, in the Code of Ethics for Board Members, um, it says, I will support and protect school personnel in their proper performance of their duties. Okay, again, there are multiple school districts within our areas who are closing going remote until the middle of January or the beginning of February. Um, our concern still has to be with our teachers and our staff and our students for health reasons, for health and safety. So Dr. Lee Shack um, said that she would continue to look at the numbers and evaluate and reevaluate as the time comes closer and moves on. Um, on Facebook, people have posted that they are going to travel, they are going to meet with their families. And again, that's a major concern for the health and safety of our teachers and staff and, and our students coming into the classroom. So thank you for continuing to um, look at all those uh, variables. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. Uh, Mrs. Miller. Hi, I just wanted to actually thank Dr. Leshek and her entire team for getting our CUSAC report completed and on time. And as Mrs. Boyle said at our county meeting, we found out that there were numerous districts in the state who are struggling to get this report done and are trying to get the governor to postpone it. So kudos goes out to Dr. Uh, Tansy Leshek and her entire team for uh, doing the work that was involved in, in getting this together and getting it done on time. So thanks to all of you. Thank you. Um, congratulations to our retirees. I just wanna wish them an enjoyable and healthy retirement. Thank them for all their years of service to our district and everything they've done for the kids of South Plainfield. And we appreciate that. Um, also just wanted to say what a great presentation we had with our uh, students and teachers. Uh, Mrs. Green, Mr. Cassio, and Ms. Briefman. Um, what impressive artwork, unbelievable. Um, and this broadcast studio, um, what a difference from when it was a little bitty studio um, in a balcony upstairs um, in one of the classrooms, what an improvement. And our greenhouse is coming along and looking really good. And it's, it's very exciting news for our high school students. I, I think all three of these are, are really exciting and we continue to improve our curriculum and our offerings to our students every day. And just also want to um, hope everyone has an enjoyable Thanksgiving. For many of us, it's gonna be a lot different from our past celebrations, but all we can do is make the best of it. And hopefully by next Thanksgiving, everything will be back to normal. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Mr. Sesselberg. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chapman. Um, First, that was a great video the high school did. It's nice to see the growth, uh, not only the environmental classes and clubs, but in the art department and the broadcast uh, curriculum. I also want to thank everybody, staff, teachers, parents, students, everybody for all their patience and keeping up with the pivoting we have to do through all this. Um, uh, our meeting tonight was replan just because of what the governor said on Monday. So uh, th things are moving quickly and it may not be in the way that we want, but uh, keep your chin up and uh, we'll get through this. Um, and also this is more of a curriculum question. So I don't know whether Dr. Leshek or Ms. Maliska wants to cover it. The performing arts classes, are they gonna have the opportunity to do anything 
through Zoom or socially distance assemblies or anything. I know some some high schools are doing radio versions of shows or play readings or things like that, where there's actual rehearsal on Zoom and then there's an announced date when everybody can tune in or things like that. Because I think what the art students are doing is wonderful. I know the the chorus and the band have been able to perform and I just want to see if something can be done for the drama students. Um, I'll, I'll answer that, Ms. Valeska. We are, we are going to have some type of a, of a performance, probably something where it is just the, uh, the music of the show, uh, so that they would be performing that way. Uh, the likelihood that we'd be able to have anything different than that would be, would be slim. So we are planning on doing something. I know we have our, our play kids and they love it. And just like, you know, it, it's important to, that we had our sports in the fall and, and do what we're going to do and still have our clubs running. It's important that we have our, our theater uh, students have the opportunity to perform as well. So definitely we will do something. And I, I'm sorry, you saw me laughing. I have to apologize. My one dog just left with my daughter and the other dog's crying because she left him home. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a little dramatic right there but this, is, <laughs> but this is also an opportunity to bring back something to the high school at least that hasn't been as far as i know decades and that's just a straight comedy they've done musicals they've done, it's been wonderful but small two four person plays a little bit of shakespeare you know they can do it half hour segments or something so maybe that's the outdoor or indoor they could be either. I'd like to see both. Um, you know, once the weather gets nice, you know, they can do something out where the, like where the band was doing their thing out on the practice field. But, you know, get back into the, the spoken drama because a lot of kids can't sing and dance. And I mean, we've got those blow up screens now. We put a stage at Jost. I'm just, I'm just getting a text from some of our teachers that are, that are saying, uh, what about an outdoor stage at Jost? And that's, go. that's where the great ideas come from. They come from our- Blow up screens, baby, let's go. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we need something to watch. Our kids do a wonderful job and you know, you know, visiting with the family is nice all over the holidays, but maybe we'll want to see something else in the spring. Yeah. Other than that, everybody have a nice thing. Mr. Thanks. a big fan of musicals, so maybe you'll, you'll pop in and, and sing a little something for us. If you want me to, I can advise on that. That's about it. <laughs> And just remember, you're not allowed to sing over Thanksgiving. Any other board member comments? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to, to, to comment, you know, we put a lot of effort in, in, in over the last, uh, you know, probably since June talking about COVID and trying to get these kids in school and, and safely and keeping the staff safe. So, you know, everything we've done up to this point, we're trying to keep everybody safe. So I don't want anybody to have any misconceptions that we're just uh, fly by night trying to just pencil this in. You know, there's a lot of effort on Dr. Leshak's part. I know that every time we have a suspected case, they're going crazy. The administration is trying to trace, contact trace and, and get everybody contacted. You know, it's not easy. And, but at the same time, we have, a, we have a responsibility to educate these children. There's kids at home that are suffering. I mean, I hear cases of parents telling me that kids are home crying. They don't have to do it, they're lashing out. So, you know, this hybrid model is is beneficial to a lot of children, but people still do have the right to stay home and learn virtually. Um, you know, I hope that we can continue to educate these children in a, in a timely manner, but safely. And we don't want to put any staff at risk. Believe me, I got skin in the game. I've got a family member who's a teacher and I've got a child in the district. So I see both sides of it, all right? And, you know, so I hope we can continue moving forward. Secondly, please, can we post, stop talking about this press box right now Right now, it's about COVID and getting these kids educated. That is not important. We're in the middle right now. We don't even know if we're going to have winter sports. We've had cancellations of games and teams and quarantines. When the time is right, we should have a, a, a healthy discussion on this press box. But God, we're in the middle of COVID, guys. Let's go. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Mr. Farinella? I wanted to piggyback on, on what Tommy was saying and just reiterate and say to the public, um, there is a lot of very high quality work going on in this district that is not going on in other places. Uh, I have a lot of experience in this area and I uh, am in contact with districts throughout the state of New Jersey. And I can tell you what Tommy said is, is, is very significant. There's a, there's a, a well-run district here 
the, the decisions that are being made are very carefully crafted. The board is fully informed. And to the extent uh, that it's possible, information is almost contemporaneous with the decisions. That's not happening all over the place. Um, uh, whatever we can do to improve communication, if folks have recommendations, we're certainly open to hear them. But um, we're, we're moving in, in, in areas um, and, and making headway where others are not. And I think it's important that we say thank you to all of our teachers and to our school leaders, because it's not an accident. Uh, it's not perfect, but this is a very imperfect time. And thank you all for all that you're doing. Happy Thanksgiving to all and, and be well. Thank you, Mr. Farinella. Any other board member comments? Okay, I would just like to add, uh, wish everybody a, uh, a happy Thanksgiving and a healthy Thanksgiving. And, you know, we, uh, I reiterate all the positive things that everybody said. I'm not going to be duplicative up here. And, um, you know, we're going to get through it. It's just, it's a struggle sometimes. And, uh, you know, but I'm confident that at the end, we'll all be, we'll all be in a better spot. So um, with that being said, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Meeting adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You said